Hello everyone, it's Mrs Briley here. Um, it's time for us to start our Gospel Assembly. Uh, thank you for joining me, it's lovely to be all together. Before I start, I wanted us to think about Mary. You can see in these two pictures here, um, highlighting the Annunciation on the left and the birth of Jesus on the right. May is the month traditionally when we think about Mary. And I want you to think about what can you do to remember Mary this month? You might want to say a rosary or say some prayers to her. Um, and I thought it would be a good way to start our assembly today by saying the Hail Mary. So join your hands together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this week um, in the Gospel, we learned about the fact that Jesus, after rising from the dead, that he would return to heaven. And it got me thinking about a favourite thing. So imagine you had a favourite thing. It might be maybe a teddy bear. It might be a phone or an Xbox or a secret diary or something special that someone's given to you. It might be your family or your friends. And I want you to think about what would happen if you suddenly were to lose it. How would you feel? So it's a bit like this for the disciples. How do you think the disciples felt when Jesus died on the cross? Tell someone sitting next to you. Tell a grown up. I, I think we can all agree that we probably feel very sad, very upset. They would feel very uh, devastated um, and a bit angry as well because they think, thought that he was wonderful. So why would someone want to harm him? And also a bit confused. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And maybe they might have felt like all of their hope had gone, had been crushed out of them. Now, if you compare that to how they might have felt when they saw Jesus, uh, saw the risen Jesus. They'd probably feel the opposite, wouldn't they? Can you think of any words to describe how they might have felt? Tells the person sitting next to you. I had a, I, I had a thought, I had some thoughts, and I thought they might feel shocked, or surprised, um, just amazed, you know, astounded and flabbergasted at the fact that he had come back to life. And probably so happy, you know that expression when you feel you're over the moon because you're so happy. And I think they probably might have thought, well, yes, there's some really good times coming. Jesus is back and it means that everything is going to be fine. So thinking about those two questions and then if we think about one other question, how do you think the disciples felt when Jesus told them he was going back to heaven? and they wouldn't see him again. Tell the person sitting next to you. I had a, I had a little think about this and I thought it might make them feel like, you know, Jesus had died all over again. And their emotions must have been all over the place, a bit like being on a roller coaster. One minute they're happy and then they're sad and then they're lost, they feel hopeless, abandoned. They might feel angry again, but you just came back, so why are you leaving us? They might have found the whole situation hopeless. Well, let's have a look at the gospel today. Um, Jesus had more surprises for his disciples, and he had a very special message. So let's listen to the gospel and to find out what he said. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a helper, to be with you forever. You will know him because he is with you. 
He is in you. I will not leave you alone. I will come back to you. In a short time, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me. Because I live and you will live. On that day, On that day you, will you will understand that I am in, I my, am father, in my father, and you in me, and, and I in you. Anybody, Anybody who receives, receives my commandments and keeps them, them will be one will be who loves me. me. And anybody who, anybody loves, who loves, me loves me will be loved by, my, be loved father, by my father, and I shall and love, I shall him, love and him, him and show myself to him. Myself. Remember, Remember, because I love you, I will never leave you. Okay, and um, so from that video, we can work out that Jesus wants us to know that because he loves us, he will never leave us. That's quite a difficult concept to think about, to kind of understand. So let's think about that a little bit more. So if you were walking on a beach and you saw these, what could you tell? Go and tell the person sitting next to you, you saw these on the beach, um, what could you tell me? Why do you think about it? They're footprints, aren't they? And so it tells us that someone has been there before us, they've been there here earlier than us, and they've left a mark. Now, it's very much like um, Jesus. He's no longer with us, but he did live on earth 2,000 years ago. Um, when he went back to heaven, he promised to leave something of himself behind with us. Does anyone know what Jesus left behind? Now, if you were watching the video, you probably would have seen, and you'll know, on a couple more seconds, was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was left for us as our helper and our guide. And we can know Jesus through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us hope. And in the next assembly after half term, we'll be celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So as we move on to the next slide, I want you to close your eyes and imagine that Jesus is in the room talking to you now. Talk to your mind and all your thoughts and listen as I lead you in this reflection. Slowly open your eyes and have a look at your feet. Carefully place your feet on the floor and feel the ground beneath you. Perhaps there's a soft rug or a carpet or some wooden flooring beneath your feet. Look at the footprint on the screen. What might it feel like to walk on sand like that? Maybe warm and cold, maybe a bit rough, a bit wet. Imagine you are walking on the sand next to Jesus, both leaving footprints behind in the sand. You look back at the footprints you've made, which remind you that Jesus and you are together. You should feel comforted and hopeful to know that Jesus is with you. Imagine today that Jesus is walking next to you everywhere you go. I'm going back to heaven now, but I'm not leaving you alone. I will ask my father to send you a helper, someone to be with you forever. The helper will be with you, inside you. You will feel the Holy Spirit's presence. I will not leave you because I love you. Join me as we say our final prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, 
thank you that even though you went back up to heaven, you never really left us. We know that no matter how we're feeling, we'll never walk alone because you are always with us. Thank you for promising us your Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just before I go, on Friday, I showed you this picture of a super skill. And I'm wondering, I, did, I was very cheeky, wasn't I? I didn't give you the name of it or a definition or any examples. I wanted to see if you could remember it. Well, the, de the super skill is resilience. Um, and the definition for resilience is being able to recover quickly, to bounce back from difficulties. So you can see that ball bouncing back off that wall there. So when we talk about resilience, we think about refusing to give up, um, not being afraid to be wrong or coping with challenges and difficulties positively, persevering towards your goals, overcoming a fear of failure, bouncing back from mistakes and learning from them. And I'm sure the adults would agree with me that being resilient is something that you definitely need uh, throughout your life. Things get thrown at you and you have to react to them and it's really easy to give up and just say you're not going to do it anymore, you're not going to try. But we know, particularly when things are difficult, that you have to be resilient, you have to keep trying. And it's a skill that I'm sure the grown-ups will agree we really want you to have. So this week, that's the skill we're going to be focusing on. Grown-ups, remember, if you would like to nominate your child, please email in at the support at email address. And also you can tell a member of staff when they call during the week. Um, over the past few weeks, we've had lots of children nominated for the super skill, but also for any other things that you'd like them to be nominated to. Um, we love, I love hearing about it. Um, so please do um, email us. Well, I'm going to go now, but I will see you all again on Friday um, for our celebration service. But in the meantime, stay safe, have a good week. Um, and grown ups, if you need any help or any support, um, there are food parcels, there are um, laptops and iPads available if you need support getting online, um, and there are various other things that we can do to help. So if you do need support, please call us or email. Okay, as I said, stay safe, take care, have a good week. Bye.